through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 222. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to talk about Jessica Chastain in honor of the release of Mama. Boom. Lady's been everywhere. Seriously. Everywhere the last Seriously. couple of years. I think of the films we're going to talk about, seven have come out in a two year period yeah. essentially. So. And she, I think she might have even had another movie come out in that time. Yeah, there are, f there are a few other ones yeah. too that we're just not <laughs> even going like, to talk about yet. Yeah. But I mean, just even in those like two, two or three years, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know if the woman ever sleeps. Or what she does. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's, <laughs> she's, she's blowing up. Yeah. I mean, very well after this, she might win an Academy Award. So we'll probably be talking a lot more about her after that. I mm -hmm. um, want to state, though, one of the unique things about this episode is usually we talk about people that we know a lot about yes. beforehand. For this one, I believe I watched six of these movies in preparation <laughs> for this. So this was a definitely an interesting, unique mm -hmm. one. So it was a really, it was actually a fun, a fun uh, thing because yeah. it ended up being fairly entertaining. It was thankfully. like, I think I remember at first being like, who? And then looking up her name and being like, oh, that lady that's been everywhere. everywhere yeah. <laughs> you might not know her by name, but you mm -hmm. probably know her by look. And then once point. we start talking about some of these films, you'll definitely recognize if you hadn't already picked her up. Yeah. So. So, you know, she started uh, back in the mid-2000s mm -hmm. as a television actress, but it wasn't yes. until 2008 and Jolene yes. that she finally made her feature debut, mm -hmm. which you can clearly see on the poster and whatnot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it seems kind of funny to think about because while it's her future debut, yes. she's the star of the movie. Mm -hmm. She plays Jolene. Mm -hmm. and, Titular character. Yes. <laughs> and in essence, the film is the, I don't know what you would call it, um, a several vignettes mm -hmm. during the life of this character Jolene. Yes. Um, usually really sad depressing ones as she yes. experiences a lot of tragedy and pain in her life you know. Mm -hmm. The death of her first husband. It's very depressing. Um, you know, uh, one of her marriages is a sham. Mm -hmm. She's sort of forced into a marriage where she's abused, yep. like her husband's murdered. Um, usually they involve marriage, interestingly enough. Yeah, it's her, like, room. it starts off with her, like, 16-year-old self. 16-year-old self being married. I was initially then... confused by that because I thought she was 21. Um, yes, yes. Her, but it, she, she, I mean... It's funny to think about because now I believe she's, she's 35. Like, really? So she was hmm. pulling a Stacy Dash, and I believe she's, like, 30. Wow. When she yeah. was playing a 16-year-old. Yeah, because, I mean, the movie takes place over 10 years, so clearly they mm. picked someone that was older. But yeah. I mean, you know, the film isn't necessarily great. Like, no. It's, 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 it's very, very much the something you would see on something like Lifetime or yes. something like that, where it's very, I don't know, melodramatic a lot of the time. Yeah, it's... it's a, oh. You got some weird cameos, like Denise Richard shows up for mm -hmm. a couple seconds. Um, Chaz Palminteri is there briefly. Yes. Uh, Michael Vartan's there for mm -hmm. a little bit as well. It's like, very strange the people that go that fate kind of show up. <laughs> but I mean, nobody like they're all okay. Mm -hmm. It's really it's totally Jessica Chastain that drives yes. this movie. She is by far the best part of this movie. Mm -hmm. She is amazing, and I, I mean, I guess I kind of feel bad for her in one sense because you know, obviously, she was a young actress. This is an indie film. They definitely, I feel like, somewhat took advantage of her and her willingness to get naked. Get naked, yeah. yeah. She's, she's naked a lot in the movie. Yeah. So um, it, it's kind of the thing that gets me is like it's based on a short story by E.L. Doctorow. Yes, and then. That short story itself is based on a Dolly Parton song. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, Dolly Parton and country western music and their common theme elements, it's not surprising that this movie would be about a woman who continues to make de bad decisions? Um, decisions for love? Yeah. Whatever you want to call them. And has a very tumultuous life. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough to watch your life, especially the way it ends. I thought the ending was sort of a little bit abrupt. And it yes. didn't really feel resolved. Like it just sort of like jumps to a resolution at the yeah. end. And I was like, I don't. And really... we're here. Yeah, it's sort of like everything looks its bleakest, mm -hmm. and suddenly everything's okay. Yes. Not okay, but it's not. Yes. Completely yeah. destroyed, like you think it's going to be. Exactly. So I mean, it, I mean, she's definitely great in the film. She's definitely the star. Of mm -hmm. She still. I mean. I don't know if you can say she steals it since she's the lead actress. Yeah, I, but she's clearly yeah, she's a, a clearly star about, in the making. Yeah, it's clearly about her, and it's not 
really about anybody else. They just happen to be there. I like to think, though, that Seattle's kind of ahead of the curve on this. Because, yeah. you know, well, it didn't get nominated for many awards. Mm -hmm. it, she specifically won the Golden Space Needle Award for Best Actress. Yes. At the Seattle International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. So, good place to get started. I mean, I, I wonder, I mean, I would have to assume she was out here for that at that point. Probably, yeah. So. Who knows? We might have seen her on the streets. Yeah, could have, could have, could have, could have known her. Could have, should have, would have. Yeah. But didn't. Didn't. Uh, jumping forward to 2011, though, mm -hmm. I mean, I talk about, I don't know, like, meteorite hitting Earth and killing the dinosaurs. Like, a meteoric rise to fame. Yes. Like, I don't know if I've seen anyone explode so much within such a short time spring. I mean, she has been in so many movies mm -hmm. and so many good movies yes, and so many big so ma movies so like, many big movies giving so many good performances I think she was in two like Academy Award nominated movies in the same year yeah and probably it's going to be the same this year um yeah maybe I mean, or at least close yeah I mean it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's I mean, she definitely blew up and obviously the first one was a huge one and that was Terrence Malick's Tree of Life mm -hmm. this is the story of a kid both in the past and yes. flipping to the future who sort of um, learning to grow up and I guess they describe it as was there's there's two paths there's the path of grace yes. and the path of nurture or sorry nature um, where grace is you sort of accept everything that comes to you mm -hmm. and nature is sort of you want to take everything okay. and sort of it's presented through the guise of this kid's two parents yes Father played by Brad, Brad Pitt. Pitt. Mother played by Jessica Chastain. Chastain. Yes. Adult version of the kid played by Sean Penn. That's right, yeah. And sort Let's of you sort of see this the experience of this kid as he sort of um, learns what this all means mm -hmm. growing up. And, you know, it's a very beautifully shot movie. It was nominated for Best Cinematography, understandable. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot like a lot of Terrence Malick films where it's it's very long and mm -hmm. it's kind of heady and kind of hard to understand what's going on. Yeah, and I believe I, they shot like millions of feet of film. Yeah, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked <laughs> at all. I mean, he he's the kind of guy who prior to the last couple years yes. essentially took a decade to make a film. Like he like suddenly he's making like one a year, <laughs> which I don't know where that came from, but literally over the course of like four decades he made four films. Yes. So I mean, obviously, he's very meticulous in what he does, mm -hmm. but watching his movies basically makes me feel stupid. Like, they're so complex, and you're yeah. searching the entire time they're, for yeah. what he's trying to say that it kind of... Because they're, so, they're so rich and, and, and involved that clearly it's not random. Mm. Clearly, there's yeah. some deeper meaning to it, and if, you don't feel, if it doesn't grab you immediately, you end up feeling kind of dragged along. Yeah. Afloat. And, I mean, it's... He was nominated for Best Director. The film was nominated for Best Picture. Um, lost both of those to the artist, which, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what you can really say about that. <laughs> it's kind of interesting to think, though. I believe the artist won both the Indie Spirit Awards and the Academy Awards that last year. So last year? Yeah, last yeah. year. Um, so it was kind of a unique <laughs> film in and of itself, but The Tree of Life is definitely what I would describe as sort of like a cinephile film. Yes. Somebody who like is really passionate about yes. film. It's Not, much more artistic than it is accessible, I would yes, say. Yes, absolutely. And I would say, you know, if you're worried about that, then I probably would not recommend yeah. it for you. I, I, I mean, agree. I found it tough to watch, and I watch a lot of movies. I was going to say, yeah, and I, I enjoy the artistic, and I have had hardest, it's the hardest times even being able to get pulled into it, let alone finish it which I didn't very meticulous filmmaking though so if you want to sort of look at it from a perspective of like film school mm -hmm. I mean Terrence Malick is definitely a that's good true. one to learn that's from. true jumping forward though we're going to go just a few months later we're going yes. from like May to August I believe at this point and that was the release of The Help yes this is the multi academy award nominated um, film also another yes. one um, about the second one in that year a woman uh, in the South, played by Emma Stone, who is attempting to give the perspective of the black uh, house servants, house and servants maids. growing or living in this sort of um, racially charged environment. Yes. And, you know, it's. I didn't watch this when this initially came out, mm -hmm. and I didn't really find it particularly interesting concept wise. But 
the film is a lot more engaging than I thought it was going to be. And actually, hmm. Emma Stone was one of the lesser engaging things. Essentially, wow. you know, she comes back and she sort of tries to get these people to tell their story. And you sort of have their story going on. You have this sort of other story of like these racist white people <laughs> really driven by Bryce Dallas Howard who okay. are both sort of classist and racist so like lovely it's a double whammy. so like you got the, these stories of these um people, affluent people <laughs> well these these workers who are <laughs> sort of oppressed even though they're very hard working and then you have these people like Jessica Jastain's character yes. who I found to be one of the most interesting parts of the movie who is theoretically a rich white woman but because of the relationship that her husband had with Bryce Dallas Howard's character previously, she's ostracized and, mm -hmm. and sort of pushed out. And, you know, it's interesting to sort of see her relationship that she goes on to have with Octavia Spencer mm -hmm. uh, once she gets hired by her and sort of, you know... Because she's separate also. So. So, but they're like, the class dynamics are hmm. different. It's just a very interesting sort of class dynamic, race dynamic sort of film. Much more interesting than I thought. And, I mean... Obviously, Octavia Spencer won the Academy Award for yes, supporting right. role, um, and Viola Davis was nominated for Best Actress, though she lost to Meryl Streep. Um, <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But Jessica Chastain was also nominated for Academy yes, Award. I right. totally forgot that she was nominated for Best Supporting Actress mm -hmm. as well. And you know, Octavia Spencer is fantastic, but I don't know. Like Jessica Chastain's character might be more interesting to me. Hmm. Because she has to deal with stuff like, you know, miscarriages. Ah, um, more you know, hard, the hardships. Yeah, like... hardships she has. Stuff like that. <laughs> like, or at I, least that are shown, I should say. Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> there's stuff like, you know, she's... Just like her character is such like she wants to... She doesn't see race, but she's also ostracized. So there's all these sort of <laughs> interesting dynamics. I mean, Octavia Spencer's fantastic as well. So, like, I can't really begrudge her winning it. <laughs> yes. But if she hadn't been nominated, mm -hmm. I could have easily seen Jessica Chastain gotcha. winning for this role. And she was great. I think it's interesting that, like, the script went through, or the original book went through so many rewrites to try to get into a screenplay. Mm. But that the director and the uh, book's writer are childhood friends. Yeah, I mean, Tate Taylor, the guy who directed it, this mm -hmm. was his first major project, so to get this many people involved mm -hmm. with a project like this is pretty... And clearly pretty... had a good, you know, passion and connection with the original writer, and it's, it clearly was a complicated story to try to get to film if they had to rewrite it so many times. And, I mean, think about it, it got nominated for Best Picture, so this dude, I mean, I would say he's pretty marketable at this point, you know, yep. so good on him for that. At least his producers are. And just just staying, uh, good on you for that. This is one of her two Academy yes. Award nominations. She didn't win this one, obviously. Yet to see what happens with the other one. Continuing right along to the end of August, mm -hmm. and we had The Debt. Um, originally, The Debt premiered in 2010. Yeah, in a few film festivals, like October, December. And area. it was initially going to be released in December yes. 2010, but during the purchase of Miramax by Disney. Correct, yes. Um, they reshuffled the end date. And I had remembered seeing a preview for this in like August 2010. So when I saw it, was mm. release date was bumped yes. to 2011, August 2011. And it 2011. came out in August, yeah. August, yeah, August, I was August, like, ugh, delaying something a year, usually not a good sign. So I was real, and August, usually a dumpy yeah. grab for movies. So I was initially <laughs> very skeptical about the movie. Um, but actually watching the movie, and it's pretty engaging. I mean, it's the story of these three Mossad agents who are sent to Germany to capture uh, um, ex Nazi's yes. doctor yeah. who had killed thousands yeah. of Jews and, and the, bring him back to Israel to stand trial. Exactly, in the like 60s. Yes. So. And then it jumps forward, you know, to modern day and they have mm -hmm. to deal with the ramifications of what occurred yes. during their time in Berlin. Yes. And. Um, You've got Helen Mirren and Tom Wilkinson and um, I can never remember. Syrian Haynes. Yes, as the three elder elderly versions, and then Jessica Chastain, Sam Worthington, and Martin Koska. Yes, um, was also the young in versions. Munich. Yep, um, and you know it's. I mean the the sort of core story to it, mm -hmm. I felt was a little bit blown up. Like I didn't think it was quite as intense as it was sort of perceived from the hmm. trailers and stuff, but the performances understand. of what occurred yes. is really what sold me on this movie. Like, I, they're say, so good. It's very good, but I'd say as far as the tense elements of the movie, it's very front-heavy. 
Yeah, as a uh, film. definitely. Like, I like mean, the story halfway of... through the second act, you're pretty much done with most of the action in the yeah. movie. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's definitely very much about the time in Berlin is the most interesting part yeah. of the story. I mean, Helen Mirren is great as sort oh, of the she's, adult. Yeah. She's very she engaging. She really carries the later story. But, I mean, again, you know, I think this is really... I don't I don't mean... I don't know if you want to call her the star of the movie because there's so many starring yeah, roles. But, I mean, but, I would say it's almost all supporting actors. But Jake, yeah, Jessica Chastain But is Jessica great. Chastain is really... Her and Sam Worthington are really the breakout performers mm -hmm. of the movie yeah. for me. Like they're so interesting. Their relationship is so interesting. Because she's like she's I'm still a Mossad agent, so she's still a trained badass. But this is her first field mission, and, and of all, and especially considering what she has to do to go undercover. That yeah, whole, whole. I mean, there, there's there's an interesting undercover story. But the whole thing that I think is sort of the most interesting that is hard to relate. You know, we have wars. Yes. Today and I like, the Americas been in a bunch the last decade, but we don't have sort of the uh, sort of situation of having like millions yeah. of relatives yes. who have been butchered. Yeah, some we don't for, have a large uh, systematic genocide that is like to come Sam Worthington's people. entire family dies yes. during the Holocaust. As does uh, Helen Mirren's mother. Yes. Or just Chastain's Yes, mother. Jessica Chastain's Um so they have to deal with these sort of like tragedies in their lives that are so immediate and because of such a profound, horrific event. Yeah. And they're already putting themselves in incredible danger by going to mm -hmm. Germany undercover <laughs> yeah. to try and capture this guy. So the intensity of this is really so well captured, especially in Jessica Chastain's character. Like, there's a scene where she just wants to go outside mm -hmm. that she breaks down. That's really just like tough to watch. Mm -hmm. Like, and she's so good at capturing these moments of intense yeah. uh, drama. That's one of the things that interests me mo most about that film was just we don't. It's. I think it's easy or it's hard for us as people being born so far after the Holocaust and even the ramifications of the Holocaust that. It's hard for us to imagine that there could be people whose like direct lifestyle had been 20 years yeah. later. We're still trying to, you know, get some kind of closure or revenge or like yeah. anything on that. We think it's so long gone that like all those people are dead and gone, or if they are, there's so few left. But like at this point, that was still a very real thing of yeah. escape Nazis. Yeah, no so. stuff. And to give you sort of some perspective, and granted, this is not just because of this movie, but this is part of it. Mm -hmm. um, this is sort of what. A general overview of what people thought of Jess Jessica Chastain coming out of 2011. Yes. Austin Film Festival Breakthrough Artist Award that she won. Hollywood Film Festival Breakthrough Actress she won. Um, Online Film Critic Society won Breakthrough Performer of the Year. Like so clearly everybody <laughs> was, was conscious. Like, who is this lady? Yeah. Where did she come from? And why isn't she making more movies? And I mean it makes sense once you sort of look at something like Jolene that she's clearly talented. Oh, yeah. But like multi range of like personalities and that. But so profound explosion coming out that it just really it's just like wow I've never seen somebody be such a scene stealer to yeah. seemingly come out of nowhere. I don't know what uh, may, maybe it's just you know it's probably societal bias and things that I've been led to believe but based on single images of her before I watched a lot of these movies uh, I don't think I thought that she had that much range of emotion mm. acting she kind of looked trophy-esque yeah, to really me think I about think her maybe if at anything but she is incredibly well ranged yeah she didn't actress. she didn't really even register for me until yeah. we started watching this and I was like wow that's her mm-hmm um, continuing on though in 2011 yet another film take shelter yeah uh, film Michael story Shannon. Michael Shannon and Jessica Chastain as a husband and wife who are in a small town and uh, I forget where uh, yeah, what it, doesn't it doesn't really matter the yeah the husband sort of starts to see these visions mm -hmm. of you know an upcoming sort of apocalyptic yes. storm and becomes obsessed with you know creating a bunker a, a bunker to save himself and his family <laughs> and and no one else you know they all they don't believe in well i mean it's, there's 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 the element of skepticism but he's also cognizant of the fact that he might be crazy yes. because his mother went nuts mm -hmm. around the same age That's and right. is stuck in a mental institution so he sort of like he's going to a therapist and stuff because of these dreams and stuff that are haunting him but at the same time he still feels compelled to make this bunker yeah. to protect him and you know um, I'm not going to really get into ultimately what does or does not happen <laughs> but it's awesome but it's it's really interesting to sort of see you know this guy 
essentially going through what seems to be a mental breakdown yeah. and the impact that has on his family. I mean, it would have been very easy for his wife, played by just Justine, to yes. just throw in the towel. And um, she makes a really compelling character who you can sort of relate to and understand why somebody might stick it out. She's yeah. really, she's really a strong female character, and that's something that she very much likes to play. Definitely, are strong female characters, as you see, both in what she's <laughs> yeah. done and what she's going to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a really interesting character. Michael Shannon is. Um, Probably an underrated actor. I oh, mean, definitely. he's definitely gotten. I mean, I think he got, this is, didn't he get nominated for an Academy Award for this? Um, he did. I want to say. I want to say this is his only. I think this might. He be. got nominated for, I believe, the road or sorry, Revolutionary Road, but okay. Um, hmm. he he definitely got some acclaim for but this yeah. role. He said that he didn't uh, study any any background about mental illnesses to prepare for this role because the character. Mm. himself didn't really have much yeah, knowledge I mean, about he's, mental he's illness. He's definitely so. sort of, he's cognizant that it exists and that he could be yeah, uh, but it's genetically not, yeah. susceptible to it, but he doesn't, I mean, he's no expert on it for exactly. sure. I mean, they sort of dump the mother in a home and that's sort of the end of that. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it won a whole slew of awards at Cannes. It won... Uh, the Producers Award at the Indie Spirit Awards, as well as being nominated for just Jessica Chastain for Supporting Actress, who lost to Shailene Woodley from The Descendants. Ah, uh, yes. Um, was nominated for Best Feature, lost to The Artist. Was nominated for Best Director, lost to The Artist. Was nominated for Best Male Lead, lost to The Artist. So, you know, unfortunately for it... Um, Michael Shannon, I'm sorry. The artist was kind of rough on Jessica Chastain in 2011. It, it was. She's not, she had a she, lot of uh, great... She had so much weight going for her and somehow still... Both Indie and mm. Academy Awards, mm. she was blocked by the artist. Cost blocked, so, yeah. one might even say. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, definitely an, an engaging film. And yes. The director, Jeff Nichols, actually has a film called Mud that was filmed last year that is sometime soon coming out hopefully hmm. theatrically and it stars Matthew McConaughey so I'm very curious oh, to check that one out interesting so, yeah definitely keep an eye on jumping forward to this year though yes um, what seemed to be a slow start to it it didn't really start till August when Lawless came out mm -hmm. this is the film by John Hillcoat which we've discussed before yes. about the um, Bondurant brothers mm -hmm. in was it West Virginia Franklin uh, County Virginia yeah um, during the Depression and their sort of um, moon, bootlegging, mo bootlegging, moonshine running mm -hmm. uh, lives. And, you know, we've talked about them and it's based on a true story. Mm -hmm. Just just staying sort of as an interesting part in the role or in the movie mm -hmm. as sort of um, someone who comes from a hurt background in the big city where she was yes. presumably like a prostitute or something along those lines looking a lady for, of pleasure yeah looking for a sort of a, a new life who sort of you know gets in a conflict about her old life coming right. back to yes. haunt her but she's also um a strong woman stands up for herself but she also sort of helps build the myth of the Bondurant brothers yes. specifically Forrest when he almost is murdered mm -hmm. um and she is raped, um, but she sort of saves his life, and that sort of people believe he saved himself, mm -hmm. and sort of builds this legend. And because at the time, why would anyone think a woman was strong? They would yes. most likely think that the man did it. Yes, and also the the Bondurant Bro, legend. Are, yeah, I was gonna say, and it didn't it help fed into that. that they yeah. were like kind of a moral. But like she's she's a really interesting sort of strong character, and I mean. I guess, if anything, you'd say, unfortunately, her role is kind of minimalized in yes. the film. I mean, she's very interesting when she's on camera, mm -hmm. but ultimately, it's much more about the brothers themselves. Oh, and definitely. they're all good. I mean, Tom Hardy and um, Shia LaBeouf and yes. Jason Clark are all good. Again, Jason Clark, remember that name because he comes back again. Um, but, you know, she's very good, and you wish there was more of her, really, basically. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Her relationship with Tom Hardy is probably the most interesting one of the movie. Yeah, I would agree I with mean, you on that. I mean, Shia LaBeouf is kind of frustrating, and <laughs> Mia Wojciechowski is okay, but, like, their relationship I don't really care about. Nah. Like, it's just, it's there. It's, it's, uh, it's I mean, a relationship. Overall, it's a good film, though, yeah, as we've it's said. Fun. It's, it's definitely one of the more pleasant surprises. Um, again, you know, in August, um, yeah. hit for Jessica Justine. <laughs> yeah, it's been somehow. a good, good month for... Um, <laughs> she might break the August uh, yeah. uh, notoriety. Yeah. Probably not. But, but maybe. I mean, the film was nominated uh, for the Palme d'Or. That's right. It lost to Amour, 
from mm. Michael Haneke. Should note though that I think like 23 films were nominated for the Palme d'Or. I think basically anything that gets into <laughs> can. But nevertheless, it's still impressive. Spencer's that it opinion was of, of can. It's there. still impressive that it was yes. nominated. And she was very solid in it, though, is probably one of her smallest Correct. roles of the ones we talked about. I mean, probably the smallest yeah. of all the ones most we're going to talk about. Most supporting character. It's it's def- yeah exactly most 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 be, uh, most well classified yes, as a supporting yes, character. Yes, yes. To be clear, yes. Um, in terms of like full on breakthrough roles, though, yeah. I think the one that probably will define her at Definitely. least up till now, and that's Zero Dark Thirty. Indeed, this is the story of the hunt for Osama bin Laden. Catherine Bigelow directed. Catherine Bigelow, Mark Bowles. Um, the team from Hurt Locker, the Hurt yes, Locker. Yes, that's right. Um, great film. Mm. Great film, but Jessica Chastain plays Maya in this movie, who's obviously a, f- a fictionalized name to yes. protect the actual agent. Mm-hmm. But essentially, a one-woman wrecking force on the hunt for Osama bin Laden over a 10-year period, unrelenting despite you know incredible roadblocks and yes. lack of faith by the government, Which lack of energy by a lot of people. Interesting, because originally the story was supposed to be about the failed hunt for Osama bin Laden. And then, of course, we find and kill him, so they're like, oh, they're like, oh just change the ending. It's like uh, <laughs> Fever Pitch. Do you remember that one? The Fairley Brothers baseball movie about the Red Sox? That's that right. It's like, it's going to be about the Red Sox losing every year. And then they want is like, oh, shit, well, we can't really say Hell, they lose uh, every year that doesn't really make any sense so, yep. um, so they had to go back and sort of reevaluate it but mm-hmm. you know it's an interesting film have you seen this film no no i was talking about the other movie. The, when i said good, when i said excellent movie yes um but the thing about zero dark three is it's a fascinating film incredibly detailed but for me it really wasn't a climactic movie like, there's not a lot of suspense. Like, hmm. everything is sort of a slow build. It's much more detail-oriented, like, watching the, the torture that was involved, uh-huh. um, whether it got there or not. I mean, mm-hmm. I would say probably did, but, um, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff, the role of torture in it. I think, uncharacteristically, the CIA spokesman came out and said, like, made a statement about how they altered facts in this movie to be different from how they actually mm. were, and that they don't condone torture. Like, they full-on, like... No, the CIA normally their their modus operandi is to say nothing and let yeah. you think whatever you want. But they actually decided to come out and say something for this movie. I mean, I don't. I mean, who knows how much they change? But it seems incredibly detailed. And it sounds like they spent. I mean, they spent years and yeah, like and hundreds of, of interviews scenes, yeah. with people to sort of put this all together. So I suspect it's fairly accurate. I mean, honestly, it's movie accurate. Um, it's I'd never say it's more be. accurate than Argo for sure. Well, um, I'm still like I said, it's movie accurate. Here's it's the, not, here's the, here's it's a, not a documentary. I'll Let's tell you, not point that out. It's a fictional narrative. I'll tell you why I think it's probably aligns. that it's probably very <laughs> accurate. If you're gonna do a film that like this, mm-hmm. why not make it more like suspenseful and stuff? If you're gonna make it fictional, maybe they that maybe that's the problem. Maybe it wasn't that suspenseful already, and what they did was them making it more suspenseful. You maybe about that, Spencer. Maybe real life I don't is know. boring. Sometimes. It's 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 interesting. The film is definitely <laughs> very interesting in detail. There's very well put together sequences. I just wish you know, as a director, Catherine Bigelow had made it more suspenseful. Like there, it felt like a lot of the the surprise sequences were like well choreographed like you know you see some people outside of a gate and then they catch someone about to come out the gate and then they catch the people outside the gate and you're like okay I feel like they're probably going to attack her and I was like oh my god they attacked her who could have seen that coming so so many establishing shots and you know the the actual like end with the the uh death of Osama mm-hmm. bin Laden like people describe it as like thir- you can't look away and it's very interesting but more or less it goes as well as one could hope. So it's not, it's very detailed, but not <laughs> suspenseful as well. So, you know, I, I very much, her performance is incredible as a woman just constantly butting her head against people trying to yes. do, do this. That um, it's really very well executed. Interestingly, it also ends with her on a plane mm. <laughs> with the little plane thing, much like the debt. Yeah. Um, but, um, very, her performance is really the driving force of the movie yes. and really the much more interesting thing. Obviously, she's nominated for Best Actress. Yep. Looks like she has a very strong chance to win. It's her or Jennifer Lawrence for Silver Lining Playbook. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to lean more towards Jennifer Lawrence. I really liked her acting in this, but 
Jessica Chastain is fantastic as well. People don't always get Best Actress uh, not awards for romantic comedies. Though. Well, that's that's so, why I think Jessica Chastain probably that's is the that's getting the favorite because she's. I'm agreeing with you yeah. because of that. Yeah. So, um, very very good film though, and I, I definitely hope it wins as many awards as it can. I suspect though, unfortunately, because a Catherine Bigelow is not nominated for Best Director. It's yes. probably a strong um, strike against it from winning, say, Best Picture and yeah. any of the other awards. I would say Jessica Chastain is probably their strongest contender, especially since she won the Golden Globe. I would so, agree, yeah. So. Um, lastly, that brings us to this week. With less than a month yep. from Zero Dark Thirty being out. Yeah, January 18th, mm -hmm. we're talking Mama. Mm -hmm. This is the horror film about a couple girls whose father um, took them away, yes. took them to a forest. They were sort of left there on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, his brother, their uncle, comes and finds them after several years of hunting for them, and they've they're sort of become feral children. pretty much feral children, and they're brought back to civilization, only they aren't brought back alone. Hello. A presence they brought comes with them. With them. Mama. <laughs> um, <laughs> this film is based on a short film of the That's same right. name yes. by Andres Mu Muccietti, mm. Muccietti mm. Um, who directed the short yes, as well. Yes, that's right. Uh, film is produced by Guillermo del Toro. You know, I had initially low expectations for this movie. I like I like just just saying, but I hadn't watched all these other films at this point. It's true. Um, and it's a horror film, so I like horror films. I I love scary films, and initially it looked. Like, the children were creepy, but not much else really was mm. interesting. Dark-haired Jessica saying, I mean, <laughs> whatever. Um, sort of, she's a punk rocker in the movie. Um, but the more, after more films I saw of hers, the more interested I was in. And later trailers made it look even more creepy, so yes. I was very interested going into it. And I would say, like, 60% of the film is really pretty well done and the, there's like 40 percent that's not well done and mostly that's the last third of the movie unfortunately Ooh, it's an unfortunate um, time to stall it's very much like uh the orphanage which was produced by Guillermo del Toro uh. and the devil's backbone which was directed by Guillermo del Toro <laughs> um about you know a spirit that is restless yes that is just looking for a way to find peace yes which is fine very interesting, but the way they do it is much more sort of like bull in a china shop, unlike those other two gotcha. films. So like, there's a few flashback sequences, first person flashback sequences, which are like just shoving the exposition down your throat. It's like this is what <laughs> Might happened. As well have text yeah. on the screen. Yeah, it was just it was just really just shoved <laughs> down your throat. And then like the last half of the film, um, very much is sort of about that you know trying to get resolution, get, get resolution, but it. A lot of it just doesn't make even sense. Mm. Like it's just stuff that's sort of like trying to be a theme of like resolution as opposed to gotcha. actual like connect. Be, yeah. It just it they just skip a whole lot of dots and just like okay here we are. Ta -da! Ta -da! Yeah. And so <laughs> we lived or died. It's 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 unfortunate. It's not great. It's definitely creepy. There's definitely the first half of the movie is very creepy. Second half, me, there's a few sequences, but mostly not. I um, Jessica Chastain is solid, but her role is fairly Minimal. unremarkable. Oh. I mean, it's, it's, she's she's definitely oh, that's right. the, yeah. the lead Sorry. actress. That's she's the other guy. She's tasked with the the most of the care of the kids because mm -hmm. the the uncle Nick Nicolaj yes. Coster Waldo from Game of Thrones Jamie is injured and he can't take care of them. Yes. Um, but like her character is just re written so vanilla that I don't really. I mean, she does well with what she has, but there's not much there to work with. The two stars of the film for me, though, are the 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 young kids, mm -hmm. um, Victoria, played by Megan Carpenter, okay. Car Charpentier, okay. whatever you want to call it, <laughs> and Lily Isabel Nelesie, okay. um, who are just incredible. They're like so creepy. They're so. They're so their movements, their methods of speaking, they're interacting with awesome. Mama. Creepy kids. It's just so well done. Like it's sort of like the Beast of the Southern Wild. Like you wonder how much of it is just like naturally the kids versus how much of it is performance. Like huh. they are so. I love that. When that line is fuzzy. Yeah, they're great. Like absolutely. Like if you want to see it for a reason, see it for the kids. And interestingly enough, Mama is not CGI. 
Yeah, it's which is amazing to think about. Actor in a suit. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. Uh, the uh, short film is on YouTube, so you can yes. check that out. Which actually is just, I believe, about the which is just about the girls mm. and Mama. They add the whole like uncle backstory into the extended version. Makes sense. Um, which I kind of find more interesting to condense it just down to those because <laughs> that was the best part of the movie. Uh, I mean, it's just for me. It came down to like they didn't know if they wanted to do it more of like a sort of dramatic story, more yes. a la. Orphanage or the Devil's Backbone, which is sort of like not necessarily scary. A few moments of scary, but that's not really what it is. Versus an actual scary movie, a la something <laughs> like you know Paranormal Activity yes. or something, yeah. and it's sort of stuck in that middle range and doesn't really succeed on either account. Trying to be just supernaturally yeah. and doesn't quite fall on either yeah. side. Um, you know, it's it's unfortunate. Thankfully, she has zero dark thirty to keep people. Yeah, with nobody will even notice. Yeah. Um, that being said, you know, why don't you join us next week for our DVD rundown mm -hmm. for the first uh, January 22nd. Yes. And you can, as always, leave us feedback about Jessica Chastain yes. at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, mm -hmm. Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. Bug us. We're bored. Yeah. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.TV, Miro, Roku. Checking to get glue. Leave some reviews on iTunes, comment, yeah. tweet us, annoy us, yeah. give us questions. Whatever, we don't care. Tell us how wrong we are, because trust me, that'll start a conversation. If it's about Jessica Chastain, we'll fight you for it. Fight you anyway, yeah. even if it's not. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the sound of stars. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.